My paper is also very related to what Benjamin um, and actually uh, Rajan presented. However, I want to warn you that this is a theory paper. Uh, Jim and uh, Benjamin already warmed you up. So this is going to be uh, even more warming up. So my, um, as a theorist, my objective is really to, to look at the evidence and then make sense of it as uh, from the theoretical models and hopefully make additional predictions that can be <coughs> tested. So my motivation is the same as this avoidance, but uh, you know, my, you know, as another motivation, we all know how successful the ice bucket challenge was and uh, now everybody knows and uh, 3 million people contributed with 2.5 million being first timers and um, arguably contributors care about ALS patients so there is some altruism there but also they felt probably they felt social pressure to meet the challenge from uh, whoever has challenged them so both charitable motives as uh, previous papers also mentioned uh, have been shown to be significant. In particular, I want to mention uh, so the social, the existence of okay, if this works, social pressure have been shown in various model, uh, various field experiments, like Andrioni uh, and his co-author showed, like how people may avoid. So very, when uh, there is pressure, of course, you want to avoid the pressure. So. Uh, how people avoid Salvation Army uh, bell ringers may, may avoid. And more importantly, uh, um, for my own model, the Alevigna list, the Malmeinder, where people don't want to be um, disturbed or interrupted. Um, so, but there is other evidence of uh, so the importance of pressure and how people might avoid pressure. So my job here is to uh, put this pressure idea into the standard theory of charitable giving. So what I'm going to add basically to Benjamin's work here perhaps is to give uh, a full equilibrium uh, analysis where when people all determine their contributions and actually we determine what exactly they do and um, who feels the pressure ultimately who doesn't depending on altruism and how much they care about it. And also, I'm going to get the conformity. When there is pressure, I'm going to show that people tend to conform whatever is, is the norm. So the standard model of charitable giving, which I'm going to interpret as here anonymous. So you are not asked. You, everybody knows the cause. So, this is the uh, so your utility depends on the public good, capital G, and your private consumption. You are maximizing that over uh, and allocating your money between giving to this public good versus private consumption. So we assume goods are normal, meaning that every dollar uh, there is propensity to spend it on giving and private consumption. So in this model, so everybody does this independently at home. So then uh, we, we determine who gives how much that's called an, an equilibrium profile of gifts from, let's say, 1 to n. Star is like equilibrium. So as you can see, the heterogeneity in this model is in terms of preferences and income. So these gifts will summarize uh, those things and what you think about others. So the nice thing is that there is a unique equilibrium. So there is a unique prediction of this profile in this, in this model. So if we now, now what I'm going to do is that Let's say the individuals are actually asked by a fundraiser directly. So in that case, as, as shown in the evidence, especially in this uh, De La list, uh, Malmeinder paper, people may feel social pressure if they don't meet certain threshold. That, uh, for instance, in that experiment, they, show they have like $10. But it could just be the fundraiser suggested amount, or like the previous year's average. You know, whenever you are asked, if you don't meet that, you just feel some, some cost, uh, incur a cost, and that cost is going to appear here if you face the fundraiser and if you don't exit this G bar, which for now I'm taking as a fixed number, but later on I'm going to view it as like uh, the average. So 
what will happen is that this is like what we call reaction function. As others give more, you give less. If, I mean, if this were anonymous, but if you are under pressure, it shifts outward. And some people who wouldn't give otherwise now give G bar, meet the uh, um, threshold. Some people would start giving. Some people just don't care at all in any case. Okay, so our first result, so when, when people give anonymously, let's order how much they would give. Like uh, this is like G1 star, G2 star, and etc. Let's order them. So when they face the fundraiser, there is a G bar. So what's going on now? These guys are now under pressure, if they care about the pressure. So what this result shows is that these guys will tend to increase somewhat toward the uh, threshold or the suggested amount. But what will happen is that these guys who, are, who were actually generous anonymously, knowing that these guys are increasing, they will tend to reduce their gifts somewhat. Because now, now that there is effective fundraising going on every, on everybody, I don't have to give as much. So there will be kind of rotation around that suggested amount. And this result has nicely evidenced by these papers. Yan Chen is also here. Actually, in their uh, movie, movie, uh, what's that? movie reviews, I think. Yeah, uh, that, uh, there is actually conformity toward the norm. So if, if you suggest something, there will be a rotation around it. But in any case, fundraising will increase. The social pressure will increase. It can't decrease. Some people will decrease, some people will increase, but in total it will increase. So who, who, who likes pressure, who doesn't? You might imagine that uh, these guys, some of these guys won't like it. But how about uh, these guys? These guys will actually like the uh, fundraising. So that's what this result shows. Uh, this result shows if you were anonymously giving above the threshold already, if the threshold is 10 and you you are already giving 15, you would actually be better off under, um, under social pressure, under fundraising, fundraising calling on everybody. Why? Because now you, you can actually benefit from others giving more. However, um, if there is, sub, um, yeah, if there is, uh, uh, let's say only one guy who is below the threshold, that guy, at least theoretically, we can say that if there were, if there's only one guy below the threshold, that guy will be worse off because everybody would basically be leaning on that person. So that's a limited result, uh, just having one person, because we are not claiming that everybody under pressure will be worse off, because at the end of the day, with an effective fundraising, the total is also increasing. So they also like the uh, total good, social good to be provided. So to, to make the result a little, bit, a little bit stronger, let's assume everybody is the same except for their incomes. So the only heterogeneity is in the income. So what is known in the uh, standard model anonymous giving is that everybody will end up with the same utility. Rich and poor will end up with the same uh, utility. How is that possible? Well, rich will just give uh, disproportionately more than the poor, so they will end up uh, consuming the same amount of uh, utility. This gives a nice benchmark. However, when we have social pressure, what happens is that some of those guys who are uh, giving below would be worse off, so under uh, pressure, people's uh, utilities will basically uh, be decreasing, um, um, decreasing in the uh, increasing in the income. So, so what it means is that there will be some threshold uh, compared to the anonymous case. There will be some threshold income below which those people would rather have, would rather give anonymously. If I'm lower than that that income, normally I would give. A, a, less than the threshold, and I would rather give anonymously. So those are the guys who, who will be worse off. So then what does it mean? It means that if I'm going to be worse off, if I'm like somewhere here and I'm worse off under pressure because I'm like 
force to uh, give uh, toward G bar, then I can, uh, you know, wh uh, what if I can avoid it? Well, suppose that, as in these experiments, suppose that donor I can avoid, can avoid the solicitor at a cost CI, at a utility cost CI. You know, um, so I like, um, I mean, I don't have to open the door, but I have to probably, you know, I may have to change plans. Or if I see a beggar on the road, I may have to change route, which may be costly. But still, we allow the fact that you, you can still donate anonymously yourself. So it's not, the, the fundraiser is not the only vehicle. You can go online and give. It's just that you don't want to, you may not want to face the fundraiser. And uh, in that case, here's the thing. If the avoidance costs were zero, if avoidance were, if you could freely avoid the fundraiser, no problem, then what would happen is that the whole thing would unravel. Why? Because everybody who is under pressure would avoid the fundraiser. And these guys were already above, under no pressure anyway, if we were giving above, would give the same. And the model and the fundraising would have no effect. If people could freely avoid the fundraiser, then the system will unravel. Because below avoid, above, they are already not subject to uh, pressure, so it would unravel. If the pressure costs were very high, then everybody would give through the solicitor. So yeah, how about in between? In the in between cases, just to make things a little bit more interesting, suppose that each solicitation also costs the fundraiser some epsilon, contacting the person. So you want to choose your set of donors you target wisely. So what happens in that case is that you want to target, what this result says basically is that you want to target the middle income individuals, if income is the only heterogeneity. Why? Because those above are already generous enough not to be subject to the pressure, so your contacting them will not affect their giving. Those far right, like uh, very low income guys, are going to avoid you, in a, like, even if it's costly. Then, if you want to be relevant, or you want to target the middle ones, those who would open the door and actually be giving, uh, giving more as a result of uh, direct interaction. So that means that we might actually get uninvited solicitations. And uh, in these uh, papers, a do not call list has been suggested. But I, as I uh, looked at the law, the US laws actually exempt charities from that list. So there must be some reason why laws actually, yes, you have a, okay. Uh, US laws actually exempt charities from the do not call list. So what might be the reason then for, for regulation for charities? So then our, what we argue here is that then if we, uh, the reason to regulate such solicitations for charities must be the over provision. Because in, in a, in a social good or public good situation, it is, we believe it's like if you don't do anything, it's under provided and fundraisers are helping it to increase toward the efficient level. So for these things to be regulated, solicitations to be put in the do not call list, uh, fundraisers must be doing this too much so that they are collecting too much money. So the, the point of regulation must be over provision, not, uh, not just, you know, people are worse off, like individuals are worse off per se. So, uh, so in that sense, we are, we are uh, kind of justifying why there may be light-handed regulation of charitable solicitations as opposed to for-profit solicitations. So our, our uh, other results in this regard is that there is actually a result in this li literature under anonymous giving that if you redistribute income, if you make individuals' incomes more equal through, let's say, taxation, then the public good will actually go down. The more equal the income distribution, the lower is the public good level. This is a, a well-known result. We actually are, uh, show that if there is social pressure or fundraising, and fundraising is we know, you know, a few people would give without being asked. 
if that is asked, there may be also some kind of pressure, so that this might actually be pretty relevant. Under social pressure, that result may turn around, that more, more equal uh, income redistribution may actually increase the public good. And the reason is that because when people are under pressure, if you redistribute income from rich to poor, you know, rich is not going to uh, lower the giving too much because there is social pressure and the other guy is increasing the, um, uh, the lower income guy. So it, it may actually increase overall. Uh, lastly, we consider what if the social norm is not obvious? G bar is now not obvious. This is the first time we are giving. Well, um, I might still feel social pressure uh, depending on how, uh, what, what the average may turn out. Like for instance, I give to my son's public school and I'm dying to know what's the, what, uh, you know, how the average will turn out because at least the treasurer who collects the checks sees my contribution. So I'm just, you know, afraid, you know, I don't want to look like an outlier. Uh, outlier in the, in the lo lower sense, uh, mostly. So then, he, I mean, here we say, instead of G bar, uh, let's say that is actually the average contribution. At the time of uh, making the donation, I don't know what it's going to be, but I know it's going to be announced at some point, and uh, that's what uh, it gives me social, potential social pressure. This is like SI is how much I care about it. So what changes now is that, what changes now is that this is basically now the social norm as opposed to being flat, it's actually increasing. Whenever we have increasing part like that, there is actually a race now. Because if others give more, then the average is going to go up and then I'm going to feel more pressure. So there will be some complementarity now going on uh, here. So that's the reason why we have this upward sloping case. So what we show is that it is possible that, well, let's, uh, I'm just going to uh, summarize here. If the heterogeneity among individuals is not too much, if these individuals are not too uh, different from each other, then they will all end up giving exactly the same amount, which will be the average. So regardless of their incomes or preferences, if that heterogeneity is not too much, they will end up conforming exactly to each other in equilibrium and giving exactly the same amount and in equilibrium feeling no pressure. But the, uh, that equilibrium is going to happen here and there is multiplicity. If I expect others not to give much, then I'm not going to uh, give much. If I expect them to give a lot, then I'm going to give a lot. So we believe the fundraiser's job here is to actually suggest an amount, the maximum amount in that among those equilibria to make it a focal point so that people don't fall, uh, fall to the uh, law, law giving equilibrium. So that actually not nicely complements the theories of conformity, complements in the sense that in the theories of conformity in economics, usually people are punished if they deviate from the norm both ways. If you deviate like uh, downward, you are punished. If you uh, deviate upward, you are punished. Here, we are actually not punishing somebody who gives above the norm. That wouldn't make sense much, because if you want to be more generous, that's fine. But we still get conformity because of the free riding problem. Because if I think others will give more below, then I'm going to uh, give less. That's how we get the conformity to the norm. So, um, yeah, so overall, we introduce social pressure and its avoidance to the theory of charitable giving. Basically, we took the Della Vigna list, Malmeinder model, and kind of provided an equilibrium analysis. And we argue that uh, we argue a light handed regulation for charitable solicitations. And that's what we see in the law, actually, uh, because it, it is about solving a social problem and uh, offer an equilibrium theory of warm glove giving. Because in equilibrium, whether you are going to be subject to this additional cost depends on what the other guys are going to do. 
uh, and show emergence of social norm and conformity in this context. Yeah. Okay, thank you very much. <laughs>